Welcome back to our channel, your go-to resource for financial wisdom. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Aaliyah M. Clark. I am a North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia real estate professional. I'm here to tell you guys how much money you need to save before buying a house. Today, let's go ahead and dive into the topic that is crucial for aspiring home buyers: the importance of saving. Before we dive into the nitty gritty, let's first understand why saving is a cornerstone of your home buying journey. Saving a substantial amount can unlock financial security and make the path to home ownership much smoother. Now let's discuss the cost you'll encounter when you are on your journey to your dream home. Down payment. The down payment is your initial investment. Experts often suggest aiming for 20% of the home's purchase price. This not only reduces your monthly mortgage, but it also leads to better loan terms. Me personally, I'm not putting 20% down unless I have. Okay, so if you're a first time home buyer, consider other other loan tools such as FHA or conventional. If you do not have to put 20% down, I'm not, I, as your real estate agent, I'm not gonna, or your real estate professional, I'm not gonna recommend that you put 20% down. If you want to put 20% down, you do that. But if I'm gonna, am, am I gonna recommend it? No. <clears throat> so next, we have closing costs. Closing costs encompasses various fees, including legal expenses, appraisal fees, title insurance, and more. These typically range from two to five percent of the home's price. Then you have your monthly mortgage payment. Your monthly mortgage payments depend on, on factors like interest rates, loan terms, and the principal amount borrowed. Understanding these variables can help you estimate your monthly expenses. You can also ask your lender what their what your monthly expenses would be and and when you find a property that you like, just have your lender draw up the numbers really quickly. Then we have property taxes and insurance. Don't forget to budget for property taxes and homeowners insurance because they are just as important as those other expenses that I told you about. These costs can vary significantly based on your location and the value of your home. So then we have location and market factors. Keep in mind that location plays a vital role. Real estate markets differ and factors like supply, demand, and local economic conditions can significantly significantly impact the home's price. Your savings goal may need to be adjusted accordingly. Then next, you need to set some financial goals. To achieve your home ownership dreams, you must set clear financial goals. Budgeting, trimming unnecessary expenses, and boosting your savings rate are potential strategies to reach your target. Take advantage of various financial tools and resources to aid on your journey. From friendly budgeting apps to high yield savings account and the expert from financial advisors, these resources can guide you towards making informed financial decisions. Allow me to share a personal story that underscores the significance of discipline saving and wise financial planning in my own pursuit of home ownership. So for me, as you guys know, if you guys don't know, I am active duty Air Force. I am on my way out. I will be separated on 15 November. That is my last day in the United States Air Force. But when I was a young airman, I had a budget from the very moment I became operational Air Force. And when I was in the dorms, I had my mo my mother, if she's watching this, she kicked me off of the car insurance because it was going to go to like $200. And <laughs> so what I did was I had to get my own insurance. <laughs> I had to get my own insurance and that was really when I realized okay I need to make sure that I'm budgeting my money so what I did was I got this blue notebook and I think it was blue or purple or something but or green and it had like little stripes on it and I wrote out a budget for the entire year guys so what I did was I wrote all my expenses down and I wrote how much I was gonna get paid every two weeks because you know in the military you're gonna get paid just like the government pays anybody else you Get paid on the first and the 15th give or take sometimes so i would go ahead and i would allocate money towards food and i would put the exact same amount of savings away every single time i got paid that way i was on an extremely strict budget but what i did was every every when i would pay a bill i would mark it off on the budget mark it off on the budget i would every time i would make some type of of action that would affect my budget i marked it down so i had an extremely disciplined 
budget going on. Then I moved out of the dorms, moved into my first apartment. And then shortly after that, I moved into my second apartment. And each time I did those, I had roommates. So I never paid rent totally on my own. So I might've been paying like three or $400 in rent each month, but that was it. And the rest of the money was coming to me. After I did that, I ended up getting deployed. I was deployed to Kuwait. And after I deployed there, I shortly after I decided I was going to buy a house. So if you guys can like almost do the math, a little bit over two years of being in the military, I had more than enough money for a down payment for my house or not even a down payment because when you're using the VA loan, you don't have a down payment or if you don't have to make a down payment. But I had more than enough money for my closing costs and I paid for my own closing costs. My The seller did not pay for mine. So that budget that I made set me up for success later on. I would advise that you guys do the exact same thing. The only thing that I do different now is I do it on Excel, but it's the exact same thing as when I was doing <laughs> that little green notebook or purple notebook or whatever color notebook it was. We all need to just figure out what note, what color was this notebook? If I could find it, I would definitely show you guys what it looks like so that, you know, we can have a good frame of reference. But let's go ahead and hop into some advanced strategies. <laughs> now for those looking to expedite their journey, consider these advanced strategies, investment accounts, rental income, and house hacking. So let's go ahead and I'm going I'm to give you guys like some more examples. And these are, these are things that I have done. Okay. I'm not going to recommend anything to you guys that I have not done myself. So for investment accounts, I used to day trade a little bit here and there. And eventually, you know, it kind of just got like a little bit tiresome. So now like I just invest into the market. So if you guys went into that, knowing that you're going to take that money out for a down payment or for a closing call, then you already kind of have a strategy. Just put money into that account consistently. Every time you get paid, put a little bit into that investment account and then it will it will grow. Have a time frame that you're going to take that money out and then go ahead and use that to do like down payment or or use it for your closing costs. But just make sure that you're putting it into an account that's going to grow. Invest into, you know, ETFs or, you know, throughout its history has grown uh, tremendously. So just make sure that you're not just investing into anything. Maybe reach out to an, a financial advisor and take their advice on what you should invest in. I'm not going to recommend any specific stocks to you guys, but definitely make sure that you guys are putting money into the market that way that it can grow. All I'm going to tell you guys is to <laughs> buy low and sell high. Okay. I'm sitting back right now wishing that I would have bought some more Amazon when I was on my second deployment. I had, it was at like 80 something dollars. I'm not going to like hop into it real crazy, but it was at like $80 or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I'm only going to buy like a couple of shares. I wish that I would have put all of, put at least a thousand or 2000 into it. But anyway, let's go ahead. And <laughs> the next strategy is rental income. So <laughs> This might be like a little bit like, I mean, if you're on here, more than likely you are a first time homebuyer. So for rental income, I would just say if you guys are looking at owner occupied loans, just know that you can use those loans for duplexes, triplexes and quads. OK, you can use those. <laughs> you can use owner occupied loans for residential properties. OK, they, they're considered multifamily, but they are still considered owner occupied because you're living in one of them so you can get that 3.5 percent down payment and get you a duplex take that rental income and now that has helped you qualify for that loan so just keep those things in mind i know that some people are like well i don't really want to share a wall i don't really want to share a house I, I just want my own house look this is about this is about doing business you know what i mean <laughs> if you are looking to get into the real estate market i would do anything i could in order to make it make sense for me and i'm kicking myself right now because i didn't buy the duplex it's crazy because the seller that sold me my single family home that is in Sumter, South Carolina, she also <laughs> was selling a duplex. And I, my mother looked at that duplex for me while I was in Kuwait and I did not pull the trigger on it. I literally went with a single family home. And right now I am kicking myself because I could have been the owner of a duplex. I mean, you know, I'm still proud of the accomplishment of owning a home in general and being able to rent that out. But if you guys want some like additional advanced strategies to like fast track your way into home ownership, then consider some rental income and like ask your lender if that can help you qualify for your loan. Then we also have house hacking. So remember I was telling you guys as a young airman, what I did was I house hacked. I got roommates. Now, some of you might not consider it house hacking. You might just say like, okay, I'm just saving money by, you know, having, you know, other people live with me. But I did that throughout my entire, this is my first time living on my own since I moved to Charlotte.
Charlotte, North Carolina. Throughout my entire five years in the military, I never lived on my own. Never. I saved literally every single little cent <laughs> that I could, okay? So make sure that you guys are playing it smart. You know what I mean? You might have to sacrifice some things now so that you can be comfortable later. So definitely make sure that you guys are considering house hacking. Find you a friend or find you, you know, someone that needs a roommate too. And if, you know, if you don't get along with them, find a new one. You know what I mean? So, and if when, once you buy your house, if you have some friends that need somewhere to rent out, have them sign a rental agreement and rent out your rooms, period. Or buy a duplex or a triplex or a quad. You know what I mean? You have all of these different things that are at your disposal. So there's a bunch of different strategies that you can take, but those are the three that I would recommend. So in conclusion, saving diligently before buying a house is a pivotal step in your financial journey. Remember, there is no one size fits all answer to how much, and it is a highly individualized process. With discipline and patience and proper planning, home ownership can become a reality for you. If you found this video insightful and informative, please show your support by giving a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends and family and anyone on their home ownership journey. Stay tuned for in-depth financial insights and tips for our channel. Again, my name is Aaliyah Clark. Thank you guys for joining us today and we will see you in the next video.